Okay, in this video, we're going to be cover 5.5, which is exponential and logarithmic models. So I know you all love word problems, right? Doesn't everybody love word problems? I am totally joking and being completely sarcastic. Nobody likes word problems. Although those are probably the, <laughs> the most useful stuff that you're going to learn out of this classes. Um, is how, the question I always get, how am I going to use this in real life? When do we ever use this? And that's what they do in the word problems. The word problems are literally how you use the math we've been learning. Um, so it always, you know, people ask about it <laughs> when it's time to do it. They're like, oh, no, no, never mind. Um, and trust me, it's okay. I'm in the same boat. Um, <laughs> the word problems are not my favorite. They do require some more patience, some more thinking involved. And for some, it's just, you know, this is rather not, right? So I totally sympathize and I get it. But unfortunately, we have to cover them in our classes and um, we have a lot of them, okay? So I'm just gonna go right into it and go through it, okay? So the biggest kinds of models that we're gonna be using in this class are called exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay, now some of the real life applications that we have for exponential growth is population. Population does grow exponentially. Okay, now, you know, what the base of that exponential function is going to be really depends on the data and how all the, if you were to draw like all your data on a graph and with a bunch of dots, you know, what kind of shape does it have? You know, which which function is it closely related to if I were to draw a function on top of it, okay? Um, that's essentially where, where this all came from. So population is definitely going to be a big one, even when it comes to, when it comes to human population, when it comes to, to creature population, it comes to plant life population, when it comes to bacteria population, fungus population. I mean, literally just talking about population. Growth is a huge Population is a huge example of how we use the growth um, models. Now, decay literally is just that. So that's something that's like depreciating. So those would be like, you know, the value of your car when you buy it, the value of your house when you buy it. Um, things like, you know, pretty cool stuff, like being able to age dinosaur bones or being able to age mummies and things like that, because uh, we are carbon-based um, creatures, and so your carbon in your body does diminish over time, even in your, your carcass. That's a gross word. I hate that word, but <laughs> in your skeleton or whatever, your remains from whenever you, you pass, and if you're buried, I mean, if you're not cremated, then you can't figure it out, but if you're buried and, you know, let's say they found some cave person's remains, they can find the amounts of carbon that still exist in those remains and then they can use that to date it okay and so i'm sure most of you are aware of it because i know you hear you know that this mummy was found or these bones are found or this dinosaur bones are found and then they they tell you how old they are um, and literally that's how they're doing it is they're basically counting how much of the carbon and there's different kinds of carbon but how i think mostly they use is carbon 14 and the amount of carbon-14 that they have left, it tells them how old, it, how old it's been dead, okay? Um, so the biggest difference between the growth models and the decay models is the exponent. So for a growth model, your exponent is going to be positive. It's going to be bigger than zero. Um, and then for the decay models, your exponent is going to be negative, which means it's less than zero. So this is what a growth model would look like. See how it goes? up over time, whereas the decay model goes down over time, okay? So if I am, um, you know, I have a bunch of little bacteria in a Petri dish, they're going to keep multiplying, and this is how fast they're multiplying, okay? So there's more and more of them, right? Whereas, let's say I have um, a mummy remains, the amount of carbon-14 that they had way long ago is gonna be decreasing as it goes, okay? So let's see some examples. There's always lots of examples. Oh no, I am going to have to put a part two from my 5.4. Just realizing these problems are in here. Oops, okay. 
So for us, we're going to go straight into the practice problems because there's a lot of them. Okay. So it says find the missing values assuming continuously compounded interest. So these are those interest problems. Remember, we have two formulas. We have um, P, the number one, plus R over N, and then NT. And then we also have A equals PE to the RT. So we have both of those formulas. So for here, it says, um, it says compounded continuously, which means I'm using this formula. That does tell me the initial investment, which is my P. So I do know this number. It does tell me my, my rate. So that's actually 0 0.012. And what it doesn't tell me is the time. So it's asking me two pieces of information, OK? This is not the same thing. It's not all one problem. It's two separate problems. So I'm going to concentrate on this one first, OK? So doubling time means I don't know what the time is, but I do know that my amount doubled. So if my original amount was 1,000, then my double amount would be 2,000. And if I solve this equation by isolating the exponential part, I get 2 equals to the exponential part. Then I can convert this, and it would be uh, log base e of 2 equal to 0 0.012 t. This is ln of 2. And then if I want to know what t is, I'm just going to divide by 0 0.012. And so t is approximately, and it says round to two decimal places. So let's see what we get. Fraction, fraction ln, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Fraction ln of 2 over 0 0.012. And I get 57.76. So this money would have to be in there for quite a long time in order for it to double. Well, especially at that annual interest rate, it's really, really low, right? Now, the second problem, I'm going to use the same formula. I have the same initial investment. I have the same rate. Um, but I don't know what A or T are. And this one says, find the amount after 10 years. So I do know the T amount. What I don't know is the A, the amount after that, right? How much I'm gonna have. Well, this is, there's no variables here. This is not a variable. This is just the number E, right? So you can type that whole thing in your calculator. 1000 E.012 times 10. And you get, one, one, two, seven point. Um, this six is gonna change this 49 cents into 50 cents. And so this is how much you would have in the account after 10 years, which basically means you only earned $127.50 after 10 years. That's not good. Okay. So now we're going to move on to number two. This one is very similar. So they did give me P and they even gave me A. Okay, the amount, right? The amount after 10 years. And they even gave me T. But this one says it's also continuously compounded. So I'm using the same formula. And so what they're asking me first is the, in it, the annual rate. And then eventually I'm going to add do the double time. Okay. So let me plug in what I have on the first one. So I have A is 1105, P is 300, E, R, I do not know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, and I know that T is 10. So I need to get this exponential part alone. So I'm going to divide by 300. Let me see, 1105 divided by 300. Oh, that's an ugly decimal. Here we go. You don't want to round it. So I'm not, when I typed it in my calculator, I got this decimal, 3.68333 repeating. You do not want to chop this off because then you're not using the exact value anymore. You're using a rounded value, which will throw off your final answer. So you definitely want to keep it in fraction form because that's the exact form. And then I get e to the r times 10 is just 10r. 
So now that I have just one exponential, I'm going to use my definition and swap this. So it's going to be log base e, and this guy won't be attached to the e anymore. This one will be. And then I get my exponent. Now, remember, this is the same as saying ln of 221 over 60. And if I'm trying to find r, I just need to divide by 10. So let's see what we get in our calculator. Um, clear fraction ln of 221 over 60. Close it and go downstairs and divide by 10. I get 0 0.1303818, so on and so forth, right? It says round your answers to two decimals. Notice that it wants a percentage. So if I'm doing a percentage, that's actually 13.04. Zero 0.04%. Now that I know what my rate is, I'm going to use that rate to figure out the double time. So I don't know what the double time is. That means I don't know T and I don't know the amount. Well, I do know the amount, double, right? If this is my initial investment, then double would be 600. And my rate I now know is uh, 0.1304, but I don't know the time. That's what I'm trying to find, the double time, right? So I do have an exponential. I'm going to divide by 300. So I get 2 equals e to the 0.1304t. Then I'm going to do log base e of 2 equal to 0.1304t, which is ln of 2. And then I'm going to divide by that decimal on both sides. So I get t is approximately, let's see, fraction ln of 2 close over 0 0.1304, um, 3 point, or no, 5.32. And that would be our response for here. Okay. So it is two separate problems that you have to do for both of those uh, examples. Now, let's see the next problem. Here, they do not give me the initial investment, but it does say it's still compounded continuously. So same formula. And I do have the amount, this is A, and I do know the years, that's T. And I do know the doubling time too. Oh God, this is hard. Okay, we're gonna do the first one so we can figure out what the rate is. So I know that the amount is 1600. Oh, I can't do this problem. It's interesting. So this box tells me that 1600 will be in there after uh, 10 years. This other one tells me that even though I don't know what my investment is, I know that this will be two times that because that's what double means. Um, and I do know that my doubling time is seven years. I can take this one and divide both sides by P and this equation will turn into two equal to E7R. Now I can solve this for R. So if I solve this one for R, I'm gonna switch it the forms. I get log base E of 2 equal to 7R, or just ln of 2 equal to 7R, or R equal to, let's see, fraction ln of 2 divided by 7 is 0 0.0990210, so on and so forth. So that's 9.90% for R, okay? So I do know this. Now, in order for me to figure out that one, I'm gonna take this equation and this value for R and put them together, okay? So I get 1600 equal to PE, and then if I move this over, it's 0 0.0990 times 10 which means P times something. I'm gonna put this whole thing in my calculator. So E 
oops, second E, 0 0.0990 times 10. What is that number? It's this number. Now, I don't want to chop it off because I don't want to affect the accuracy of my answer. So I'm just going to write the whole number in there. But if I'm trying to find P, I'm just going to divide by this number. And then I'm not going to rewrite it in there. I'm just going to say 1600 over, and then I'm going to copy that and place it in the denominator. Oh, but didn't place it in the denominator. Okay, I can do it better. 1600 over, and then I want that last response. So I'm going to hit second and answer. And even in the black calculator, it's still the same thing. And so what it does is it takes that last answer and it plugs it right in where it says A and S. So I am evaluating the correct fraction. And I get that P is 594.52. And so now I know this is 594.52. And we've done it. So this one I knew I couldn't solve because I had too many variables, right? And when I set it up here, I noticed that there were too many variables. But as soon as you see P on both sides and you divide by P on both sides, you no longer have two variables. You only have this one variable, which means you can solve it. OK, this is super tiny. Now this one's different. This one says compounded monthly. So I'm using this formula. Now they do give me my rate, that's 3.5%, which means 0 0.035 as a decimal. And it says, determine the principal, so I don't know P, that's the unknown, that must be invested at a rate of 3.5% compounded monthly. So that tells me that N equals 12. So that 500,000 will be available for re retirement. So this is my A, and T is equal to 13 years. So let's see, let's plug everybody in. If A is 500,000, P is what I'm trying to figure out, R is 0 0.035, N is 12, N is 12, and T was 13 years. This is all numbers. I can type all of that in my calculator and figure out what that number is. Parentheses, one plus fraction, 0 0.035 over 12. Close the parentheses and raise it to 12 times 13. And I get 1.57512991. And if I'm trying to solve for P, if P is multiplied by this, then I will divide by that to get rid of it. So that'll go away here. And in my calculator, I'm gonna do fraction, five, one, two, one, two, three, divided by that last entry. So second answer again. And I get three, one, seven, four, three, four, point one, four. So this is how much they would have to put in right now in order to get 500,000 in 13 years at this specific interest rate. Okay, the next one. There's a whole bunch because I wanted you to have examples of the different kinds in your homework, okay? So here, oh, this one's good. This one's talking about a radioactive isotope. So they want me to fill in this information. Remember the formula for these. So it's um, Y equals Y naught E to the RT. This one means initial amount. This one means the amount after some time. And when we say some time, that depends on this because T is the time and then R is a rate. And remember, your rates always have to be in decimals, okay? If it's growing, it'll be a positive R, and if it's decaying, it'll be a negative R, okay? Now, you definitely need to understand what half-life means, okay? Half-life is the number of years that it takes 
for you to have half of what you started with. So this is a decay. Whenever you see the word half-life, it's a decay problem. Only decays have half-life because it basically is the, the time where half of the decaying has occurred, okay? Um, so I can use this information and this information to figure out that one, okay? Um, but I can't figure out this one. The only way for me to figure out what's happening after a thousand years is if I know the initial amount and the rate, and then I would just plug in a thousand years. So I have to know the initial amount and the rate. Now they did give me the initial amount, right? It says initial quantity. So I do know that this is my Y sub zero, okay? So I do have that value. But in order to figure out this one, all I would know is T and I'm still missing two letters, okay? So I cannot do it this one. Whereas in this problem, it's telling me that when I have half of what I started with, it will take me 15, almost 1600 years, okay? Well, if this is how much I start with, what's half of that? Half of that would be like 2.5. And I already know how long it takes me to get to half. It takes me the 1599 years. So this is an exponential equation. Let me divide by five so I could figure out what that is, and I would get 0 0.5. Now it's got one single exponential, so I can say log base e of 0 0.5 equals r times 1599. This is the same as saying ln of 0 0.5. And if I'm trying to solve for r, this is multiplied, so I'm going to divide by it. So then I get R, which is approximately, let's see, fraction ln of 0.5 over 1599 is negative 0 0.00043348. Now it doesn't ask me for the percentage, so I'm just gonna leave my R like that because when I plug it in, I need to have it in its um, decimal form. So I know this is my initial amount. And now I know that this is my rate. I just need to figure out if I want to know how much I have after a thousand years, that means I need to plug in a thousand here. So for the second part, times zero, four, three, three, four, eight, eight times a thousand. And guess what? All of this is numbers. So I can type all of that in my calculator. So I'm gonna type five E. I'm not gonna type that in there. I'm just gonna do second answer. I'm cheating a little bit or shortcutting. And then a thousand and I get 3.24. And so that's how many grams it has after a thousand years. It makes sense because if it takes 1599 years to get to half, which was 2.5, then in about a thousand years, which is like two thirds of this, it's already decayed that much. Okay. So it, it, it's correlating, right? Now, number six is very similar. It just has a different, oh, it didn't give me the initial quantity. So I know this is the formula I need to use. I don't have the initial quantity, so I don't know what that is. But I do know these two pieces of information, okay? So let's see for the half-life. That means that whatever I had, my initial amount, whatever it was, I don't know what it was, but it really don't matter. Because whatever it was, half-life means I'm gonna end up with half of it, okay? After five, seven, one, five years. It's a lot of years for it to decay. But regardless of what this number is, if I divide both sides by that number, I get one half or 0.5 equal to e to the r times this number. My exponential piece is all by itself. So I can change the forms over. And then remember, this is just ln of 0 0.5. 
And then if I'm trying to solve for R, I'm gonna to have to divide both sides by five, seven, one, five. So then I get R equal to clear fraction LN of 0.5 over five, seven, one, one, five. And I get negative 0 0.0001212286. And that's what I get for my rate. Now it didn't ask me for my rate, but in order for me to figure out the initial quantity, I'm gonna have to use this rate and this piece of information, okay? So let's plug in what we got. We don't know the initial amount, so that's still why not. We do know the rate, that's this number. And then if I'm doing this one, I do know the time. The time is a thousand, and the amount that it's gonna have after that thousands of years is only one gram. Oh gosh, this is all just a number. So it's one equal to this guy times some number. Let's see what that number is. I'm not gonna type the whole thing. So I'm gonna do second answer. So all of that times a thousand. And I get 0 0.88578948. And then if I'm trying to solve for this value, I just need to divide both sides by that number. So then I get that that value is one over that last answer, which is 1.13. So this would be the initial quantity that they want in there. But notice that I had to solve two different equations in order to get that quantity. I didn't have enough information for the, from the first equation. It only gave me half of the information and then when I plug that in with this new information, it gave me the other half, right? It gave you the value you were looking for. Okay, we got about three more problems here. And I, I can guess myself, let me make sure I am recording. Yes, I am. Okay, the number of bacteria in a culture is increasing according to the law of exponential growth. So that means we're using this formula and it's even giving me a hint that my rate is gonna be positive because it's growth, right? So it says after three hours, um, there are 100 bacteria, okay? So then that means Y would equal 100. But over here, after six hours, there are 800 bacteria. And it will says, how many bacteria will there be after seven hours? So I basically am doing like one of those tables where I have two pieces of information and I'm gonna put it together to try to figure out what the equation looks like, okay? I don't know what the initial amount is. I don't know what the rate is. And I need those two pieces of information in order to use this as like a formula, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and see what we have if we do this. So we have 100 equals Y sub zero e to the r times three. And over here we have 800 equals y sub zero e to the r times six. So let's see, let's do substitution method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by this so that I can solve for my why not. And then R times three is just three R. So then this would become 800, 100 over E to the three R times E to the, and if I multiply those, six R. And then remember, if you have one exponential with the power divided by the same kind of exponential with the power, you're supposed to subtract those powers. So 6R minus 3R is 3R. And now we've turned it into an equation that can be solved. So then I'm gonna do log base E of eight equal to 3R, which is ln of eight equal to 3R. So ln of eight over three equals R. And let's see what that is. On fraction ln of eight over three.
So now I know the rate, but I still need to figure out the why not. But since you have this formula over here, we're gonna use that to find out why not. And then I'm gonna plug in this number, 0 0.69, all of that. So let's see what we get here. We get fraction 100 over E, and then I'm just gonna do three parentheses, second answer, since I have that 0.69 in my calculator still. Oh, wow, interesting. We get 22 over five or 12.5. So now I have everything I need. I have Y naught, which is 12.5, and I know R, which is 0 0.06931471. And so if I want to tell them how much bacteria there will be after seven hours, this will become seven. And I can type all of that in my calculators. 12.5 E to the, oops, delete, E 0.69. 3147181 times 7. And we get y is, if you round it to two decimals, it's going to make it go up to 1600. And so you get y equal to 1600. Okay, so we're going to move on to number eight. That's our second to last one here. Um, so this one says, use the acidity model where acidity, which is pH, pH levels, is measure a measure of the hydrogen ion concentrate, which is denoted by this little symbol. Uh, it's like a bracket with H and like a plus sign. And that, that measurement is measured in moles of hydrogen per liter of a solution. So it says, find the pH when that hydrogen ion concentrate is this value, okay? So since I have the formula for it, I'm just going to use that formula. And it says negative log of this value. And I know that that value is this number. And this can all be typed in my calculator. So we're going to put that in there. Negative log 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And then get down and close the parentheses. And I get round to two decimal places, so 4.74. And that's it, that's all we gotta do for that one. So that one's nice and sweet, right? Short. There's another one, but it's not as short <laughs> as this one. So this one goes in the reverse. So this one is the same formula, right? They give me the same formula, but this time they want you to compute the ion, uh, hydrogen ion concentrate when they give you the pH level. And then you have to answer your answer in scientific notation, okay? And round a decimal value to two decimal places. So what I know now is I know that this is the 4.8 and I have negative log of something. I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna write that symbol. I'm just gonna put H, okay? So I'm taking log of H. Well, in order for me to swap the forms over, I can't have a coefficient. So I'm gonna divide by negative one. And then in order for me to swap the forms over, I need to know what the base is. When there's no base, that's the common log, which means the base is actually 10. So if I switch the forms over, it's gonna be the base with this exponent equal to the argument, which is just H, okay? And that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find H. But let me put this number in my calculator. 10 raised to the negative 4.8. And before I hit enter, I'm gonna to go to mode and I'm gonna make sure instead of being in normal mode, I'm gonna put it in scientific mode. So I just hit enter to highlight it and then quit. And now that it's in scientific mode and see how it says SCI up top, I'm gonna to hit enter and it gives me the answer. So I have to round this to two decimal places, which is 1.58 times 10 to the negative five. And so this is what they want in here. And there we go.
So this is the end of this section. I wanted to make sure that I included examples of everything so that as you try to do your web assign, you have some problems that are very, very similar. I did grab all of these from um, a version of the web assign assignment. So they should correlate and be very similar. Okay, so hopefully that helps. As always, if you're working through the problems and you come into issues or questions, you can always text me um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Other than that, uh, you guys have a good one.